Hello there, happy Christmas, and welcome to this rather special notebook where we're going to explain F1's new tyre rules. Um, now, you might have seen this announced a month or so ago, and if you didn't understand it at the time, you're not alone. Uh, I had to read the rules about four times before I fully really got to grips with it, um, and I've spoken to Pirelli and I've spoken to a lot of the teams, so what we're going to do is, is explain, with the help of uh, my daughter's uh, Play-Dohs, which are representing... Um, a set of tyres, exactly what compounds they can use for the first three races, how many they get, how the teams select them, and then when the teams are going to use the compounds they've got, and how it's going to affect the racing. Now, the first thing to talk about is why have we got these new rules? Well, it came from the teams. They decided that like Force India or Ferrari, that they could do with running softer compounds now and again, and that the tyres shouldn't be so hard all the time. And that might give them some more strategic probabilities and options to play around with in the race. But over time, over the last few uh, months, the rules have been shaped and squeezed a little bit by Pirelli just to make sure that teams aren't doing anything silly with unsuitable tyres for certain circuits. And so we have ended up with a certain amount of control from Pirelli to make sure that the teams have to race some sensible compounds. And we'll get to that uh, at the end. Um, uh, it's really important to just remind you that each, about the colors, that's what I was gonna say, um, medium, white walled tires, same, yellow, soft, and red, super soft. Now, in previous years, they were just having two compounds per weekend. But now it's three compounds are allowed. Pirelli decide which compounds they are. Uh, and for Australia, for Bahrain and for China, they've decided that the three compounds that are allowed to be raced are these three, which are the white, the mediums, the yellow, the softs, and the red, the super softs. When we get to Monaco, we'll see some different compounds even more. There's going to be a, a purple striped ultra soft tyre, which will be nice and interesting uh, to see. So um, when you look at the sessions, I think it, it, it helps to explain how the teams will be choosing their tyres and how they'll be running them. You get 13 sets for a race weekend. So let's go through uh, the sessions. For the first 40 minutes of free practice one, uh, the teams are going to be running a medium set of tyres. And then for the rest of P1, uh, they'll be running a medium set of tyres uh, as well. For Free practice two, when they do their race runs, they're going to need to understand how long they can get, how long they can run the soft tyre for, so they'll use a set of that. But they'll also ask Pirelli for a set of the super softs because they will be racing, certainly in Australia, uh, maybe not in China and Bahrain so much, but uh, they will all probability be racing the super soft tyre and they need to get the information as to how long, how many laps that super soft tyre is going to do. So I think we'll see a super soft tyre appear in practice two as well. At the end of Friday, those tyres get given back to Pirelli, so they can't use those four sets of tyres anymore. For free practice three, it's the same as it is more or less uh, now. We've got a set of uh, soft tyres and then again a set of super soft tyres for a qualifying uh, simulation. Now at the end of free practice three, those tyres get given back to Pirelli as well. So what's important really to remember is that you've got these sets of tyres to be used for the race. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven sets of tyres to be used for qualifying and the race. Actually, that's not strictly true because of the top 10, the super soft that they use in the final part of qualifying three, if the, you're lucky enough, as the top 10 will be, to get through to qualifying three, they'll have to give that back. But anyway, we'll carry on. Now, the interesting thing is, are you going to go all out for qualifying position and in qualifying, use mostly super softs and a set of softs, because you'll need a set of softs during the race. Be brilliant in qualifying, but then be left in the race, starting the race on a set of super softs, which are only going to do you a handful of laps, because they're not really designed for some of the circuits, because they're an ultra-aggressive choice. Or are you going to play extra safe and actually be left with tyres that you can do fewer pit stops on, 
because the tyres will last longer, allowing you longer stint lengths. And that really is the biggest quandary as to how the teams are going to use and work these regulations to their best advantage. But we'll go through qualifying one anyway. Um, most people, will, certainly the, the fastest cars, will try and get through Q1 on a set of uh, soft tyres with the, uh, the, the, the yellow stripe. Uh, if they can't, they'll go through it with a set of super softs the way they do now. Now, Q2 is an interesting one. This is why we've made it quite big and pink. That's because the rule about starting the race on the set of tyres with which you set your quickest lap in Q2 is still there. So you've got to be absolutely sure that you want to start the race on a set of super softs. Uh, and if you don't, then you're going to have to be very careful and start maybe do Q2 on a set of soft tyres. But if you do Q2 on a set of soft tyres and you're in the top, you're hoping to get through the top, top 10, you've got to make sure that your car's quick enough because there'll be some people who might not expect to make it into Q3 who will do Q2 on a set of super soft tyres and might beat you. And if you're just thinking about your race, you might end up outside of the top 10 anyway, which will make your Sunday rather harder. So that's the, another one of these balancing acts, this trade-off that the teams are going to have to do. But let's say we get to Australia, which isn't particularly hard on tyres, and uh, you qualify very well uh, on your super soft tyres in Q3, Q2, then you get to Q3, and you'll get your super soft tyres and try to get as high up the grid as possible. So, what for the race? Well... The race start will then become this tyre with which you start, with which you set your fastest lap in Q2, becomes your race start tyre as it does now. But then, what Pirelli have said, this is another element of the new rules. Pirelli have said that they will nominate two sets of tyres which can only be used in the race. And for Australia, for China, and Bahrain, they have said that they will nominate a set of soft tyres and a set of medium compound tyres. But you only have to use one of them. You are only obliged to use one of those sets. You don't have to use them both. So what we'll probably see in Australia is everybody starting uh, on the super soft tyres, that is in the top 10, and then changing to the soft tyre in the first stint. And if they fancy it, they don't have to, going to the medium tyre for the end. What they'll probably do is actually use the set of softs from Q1 to go from the end. So what was a one-stop race because of the tyres last year in Australia will, will probably become a two-stop race this year and we're probably going to see one more stop uh, in most strategies. So what was a two-stop will become a three-stop uh, and so on. Um, now where it starts to get interesting finally is if you're outside the top ten because that means you have a free choice of what you start the race on. You don't have to start the race on this delicate super soft tyre. And this is going to be especially crucial in Bahrain and China. Bahrain because we get high de tyre de degradation there. And China because it's front limited. The front tyre always wears out there. We always talk about it when we get to China. I'm sure you're familiar with it. So if you're starting, if you're qualifying on in Q2 with the super soft tyre and you're in the top 10, say if you're Lewis Hamilton, you want to get for as far up the grid as possible, or Nico Rosberg, they're both in a fight between them, so they both want to use the super soft tyre. You start the race on that in China, it's only going to last one or two laps, three, four, if they're lucky. So they're going to have to come in quite early and then change either onto the soft or onto the medium to complete it. Whereas if you're outside the top 10, you can start on a nice set of soft tyres and you can go much longer into the race, so you're actually ahead of the guys who've had to make an early pit stop, and then you can do much more symmetrical strategies, maybe doing one stop less, a few ones, fewer stops uh, than the top guys, and really get yourself into the mix. So that is where these rather complicated rules are going to be particularly interesting because we are going to get the likes of Sergio Perez or Nico Hülkenberg and a Force India or Max Verstappen or Carlos Sainz in a Toro Rosso who are kind on their tyres or whose cars are kind on their tyres really mixing it up with the guys at the front who have been obliged maybe to make an extra stop because they're being so uh, attracted by the super soft, the quickest tyres uh, of the weekend. So I think that's pretty much uh, about it. Anything else to go through? Um, yeah, there. It, it is driver by driver 
it's not team by team. So we could see a split, say Ferrari could put Kimi Raikkonen on a much more conservative tyre strategy where he doesn't ask Pirelli for one, two, three, four, five, six sets of super soft tyres. He says to Pirelli, actually, I'd really like a few more softs and I'd like a, another medium, a few mediums in there uh, as well because I'm going to go a bit more conservative. I might not make it into Q3, but then I'll have much better tyres for the race, which will be much longer lasting. So we might see some drivers splitting uh, within teams. And um, it is all about that. Do you protect yourself for the race by qualifying, by sac sacrificing qualifying, or do you go for Saturday glory and then hope for the best on Sunday? And is your car hard on its tires? Really, if your car is hard on its tires, then you're gonna see, you're gonna really take a lot of pain. You've got to design, if you're a team, a car that's particularly easy on its tires this year because of these new, new rules. So actually, I think it will be quite a lot of fun. And we'll be, of course, simplifying it all for you uh, during the race weekends in Australia and China and Bahrain and the rest of the weekends so that you know exactly what is going on. So um, thanks very much for watching. Uh, have a happy new year. We'll see you for for the Autosport International Show. We'll see you at the Autosport International Show in the middle of January. And Sky Sports F1 will be bringing you all the latest from winter testing uh, starting on February the 22nd. So that's it from the tyre explaining notebook. Hope it made uh, some sort of sense. Uh, and uh, I'll say just for now, thanks very much for watching and Happy New Year. Enjoy Sky Sports Live on all screens, on the go, and the best bits on demand.